Greetings, and thank you for watching Bringing Flexibility to Course Delivery. My name is Brian Kowalsik, Associate Dean for the College of Technology for Davenport University. I'm Christopher Lugan, Director of University Academic Services at Davenport University. Let's begin with an overview of Flex. Flex is known by different names, like HyFlex and BlendFlex at different universities. We just call it Flex at Davenport. The Flex delivery method at Davenport combines three delivery methods, in-seat, synchronous online, and asynchronous online into a single course. Students can choose how they attend each course meeting as their circumstances permit. For example, a course that meets two days a week on Mondays and Wednesdays, a student could um, come to class in person in an in-seat classroom for the Monday meeting, and then if their circumstances change or if their preference changes for that Wednesday class, they could participate through synchronous online technology. Or if they are unable to make that Wednesday meeting, they could attend on their own time through the asynchronous online option. And students can move freely through the three modalities throughout the course because we leverage many LMS features to ensure that there's a quality experience no matter how our students attend. Here's a basic visual view of how Flex works. At the center of our diagram, an instructor teaches an in-seat class and records it. This is posted to the learning management system and is available to students on demand. What's key is that all students, in-seat, synchronous online, and asynchronous online, get to experience the same information. Synchronous students can also participate in real time from their preferred location. We've received positive feedback on this, and more and more students want us to record lectures and class interactions now, no matter what delivery method their instructor is teaching in, so that the students can watch the recordings as often as they feel is needed to make sure they understand the material. This has been very helpful for instructors too, as they now have built-in visual aids to help students learn and ready to navigate study guides. Now I'm going to turn things over to my colleague Brian, who, as a Flex instructor, can tell you much more about how Flex works for students, instructors, and Davenport University as a whole. So what does flexible course delivery look like from the student's perspective? Well, as we already noted, students may attend lectures in any one of the three uh, modalities. But more importantly, assignments are also tailored to these three modalities. Now that's not to say that there are three versions of each assignment. There could be, depending on the needs and the nature of the assignment. However, we have found out through our experiences so far that assignments just need to be reworded so that they make sense for students no matter what modality they are attending class. This could be as, as simple as uh, referencing a, a discussion forum that's being used for a, a conversation um, or not saying work with your partner that sits next to you uh, because if you're attending class um, synchronously remote, you know, that's a little nebulous. Who's sitting next to me? I'm in class. We can, I'm hearing people talk right now. But So a little forethought needs to go into the wording of each assignment so that it takes into account the possibilities. Now, we've also found that discussion forums are a great mechanism for being the glue that kind of binds a lot of this together. Okay. So if you're having discussion activities in class, uh, the in-seat students and the remote virtual students that are participating in real time, it makes it's very easy for them to communicate okay, because they're hearing everything um, in real time. However, how do you bring in asynchronous students into the conversations? Um, because they're not watching in real time, they may watch two, three days later. And this is where the asynchronous discussion forums come in as an extension 
to the in-class um, assignments. So what happens uh, typically in uh, some of the assignments that I personally have given is we have some discussions um, and those are recorded and uh, you know the, the two modalities participate live at that point in time. However, for the assignments for all students, regardless of how they attend, is to extend conversations that are present in the lecture in the asynchronous discussion forums. So this requires um, a, all students to have watched the lecture, to understand the questions, and to also continue those discussions in the electronic discussion forums. This helps bring everyone in to the discussion so that they're on the same page and having interactions and extending conversations um, uh, in totality. So how does this look from the faculty perspective? Well, as you can imagine, the faculty need to engage uh, students in all three delivery modalities. Right. The lectures go a long way. Um, however, um, in the course, um, asynchronous students and the remote students also need to be brought in um, the to the discussions and to the activities. Okay. So the lectures must be um, engaging. Uh, to both the uh, remote students in real time and also the asynchronous. But it's very easy to kind of uh, let the asynchronous students uh, that are attending remotely through video conference, uh, you know, if they're quiet, uh, sometimes it's like, oh, forgot that you were there. So they need to be uh, constantly engaged, just like you would um, in a normal NC uh, class. Uh, where you would see someone in the back um, that may be drifting off um, into social media or um, you know maybe to sleep, and um, you know reengage them um, with the material. The same is, uh, is also true um, for the uh, asynchronous students um, that may be watching the uh, the video um, hours or days later, um, reaching out to them saying, now if you're watching this video, uh, here's what we want you to do head to the discussion forums. Those little prompts and those little reminders um, help students um, as they are listening um, and also reading the instructions uh, for the assignments connect the dots as far as um, what they need to do. Um, and also doing the same for the, uh, the remote students. It's easy, again, it's easy to forget if you've taught a, a kind of a blended class where you have uh, students attending in, in, in real time because it's easy to see them they're right there. Uh, but the, the students who are attending virtually um, are pictures on a screen that may be covered up with a uh, uh, with material slides and such. So um, as you reach out to the asynchronous students, um, you also need to reach out to the uh, the in seat students. And you can't do them necessarily both at the same time or with the same language. So it needs to be very deliberate. And uh, these are things that we have uh, that we have learned. It seems subtle, uh, but through student comments and discussions. Um, and surveys on students that have taken this, um, that's where we have landed uh, to make the distinction so that it engages them, especially um, if students are um, moving back and forth between the, uh, the modalities. Now we don't see students moving back and forth between modalities very often. They usually settle in between one or two. Um, I've personally found that I've had some students um, get into a cadence where uh, they attend in seat once a, once a week and they attend um, either asynchronously or remotely um, another day. Um, they find what works for them, which is the value of these delivery um, opportunities. So again, though, the foundation and what we found very powerful uh, to be the glue again that binds all this together um, are the uh, discussion forums. Now, we could have a whole discussion just on discussion forums and what makes good discussion forums and it's not the intent or the scope of this presentation to, to get into that. However, having some discussion activity, whatever that may be, to bring all students onto the same page um, with the material, um, again, is very, uh, very beneficial and a key component to um, how we are delivering uh, flexible delivery um, at Davenport University. The technology that supports flexible delivery um, is fairly what you would expect, um, especially when we're talking about remote video conferencing. Uh, microphones and uh, webcams are standard equipment, um, although microphones are essential. Cameras, uh, webcams um, may vary depending on the, the nature of the course. 
for a lot of um, procedural uh, based courses, uh, math courses, um, um, computer programming courses and such where a lot of the, the work is um, you know, processes through manipulating programs or you know, working on uh, uh, sample problems. Um, don't necessarily need cameras a lot, but there are other uh, courses uh, where cameras would be uh, essential. Um, including um, speech classes uh, where you need to demonstrate uh, technique. Um, so depending on the, the nature of the course, the students, um, at least in all courses, need microphones. Cameras um, may be optional um, for certain courses and required for others. So it definitely helps. Now there's always the uh, the, the the question of should I be able to see all the students? Um, and that is that's one of the hard things. Um, um, even now with, uh, with COVID, we're finding out that uh, even students that are participating in seat, um, it's hard to see their, uh, their facial expressions um, if they're in the classroom with, with their masks on, which is kind of putting them on a level playing field with uh, students that are remote um, and participating only via voice in real time uh, where they're not uh, actually projecting um, you know their their face into the into the classroom. Uh, they may just have the avatar uh, up, so you can't see their reaction, and that that definitely is challenging. Uh, so we need to you know it seems like a broken record sometimes. You know where you're asking simply, does anybody have any questions? Um, is this making sense? Um, would you be able to uh, um, do this yourself? Um, or um, another great activity is let's take a, a few moments and. Um, do this sample exercise to make sure we're all on the same page, including reaching out to the asynchronous students saying, now at this time you should also take a few minutes to do this exercise and if you cannot complete it or have questions, it is appropriate to email the instructor um, for assistance. Don't just let it go by because it's definitely probably something that's going to come back um, and be needed later in the course. So individual microphones and cameras um, as necessary based on the course. Now other technology, now this isn't um, any type of uh, endorsement for specific technology, but um, the uh, classroom uh, technology that we're using is a smart board by smart technologies. Um, I'm not going to go into any um, uh, more product definition than that other than essentially it is a 65 inch iPad that you can as a touch screen device where you can interact with it um, and it has pens to mark up and uh, this is where in the live session um, had we been in uh, uh, in person we were going to have an activity here uh, but I also wanted to take a moment and uh, just uh, uh, demonstrate um, a piece of software that uh, I use quite a bit um, in the classroom and it's the smart notebook and this is a, a basic version, as you see, it, it's free, and it's essentially um, a whiteboard. You know, one plus two, and you can write this down, and I'm um, using the smart board, or personally right now I'm using a, uh, uh, a Surface with a uh, stylus. Um, I also have on another computer um, a tablet, a Wattcom tablet with a uh, stylus, so that I can work on um, items and uh, you know withdrawing on your hands. So the benefit of the software is that um, it works a lot like PowerPoint. And if you don't like black there are multiple colors. And this is one of the things the students have to be able to read. Um, the writing. Nice thing about the, um, some of the stuff is you actually you never write something in the wrong place. This gives you some flexibility um, and also some interesting features. So again, um, you can look at this um, at your leisure. But the, the benefit is the slide sorter here that you can go back and forth. So you never run out of room. Um, you can infinitely extend, the, not infinitely, but you can extend the pages um, or add additional ones. And most importantly, um, you can save the notebook and pick it up later. And what I often do is I export it either as a PowerPoint, but more commonly I export it as a PDF. So now the students are actually getting the course video and they're also getting the materials that were written on the board, so to say, so that they can watch the video and they can actually reproduce themselves um, the, uh, the slides and they can see the uh, um, and have a copy of the uh, material uh, that was written on the board as it was uh, 
um, as it was finalized. So the video shows the making of the uh, slide deck, if you will, and then the present presentation of the material just allows them to have have that. So either they you know can print it out and work with it as a worksheet or um, you know whatever their need is. But the software is beneficial because um, it replaces the whiteboard or the chalkboard and allows the remote students to see uh, very clearly uh, the material that is um, also visible um, in the classroom. So the flexible delivery method also benefits the university. It allows us to combine courses for more efficient resource utilization and also scheduling. It's a lot easier to schedule um, you know, um, one class um, versus two or three. Um, it also increases um, the average class size. Um, if you have uh, you know two or three courses, uh, you may find that you have uh, you know eight, nine, ten students in a in a couple of the sections. Uh, this provides the opportunity uh, to increase the the class sizes to a, a more reasonable reasonable number. Um, having said that, though, um, the normal caps for classes um, an in seat class uh, dictates this. We're, this is not a method that we are using to um, have classes with 60 or 80 students um, um, in it because you're combining the three modalities. That's the, the same cap that we have for in-seat class sizes um, fits um, for a flex course. So we treat this just as a in-seat class. So if your classroom only holds 25, uh, that's the, the, the limit that we put on the course just to allow for uh, the faculty to have uh, a reasonable amount, a number of students to reply to because it is a little bit additional um, outreach when you're talking about combining the different modalities. So there's a little additional work uh, that's involved. So adding uh, additional students would not necessarily um, help that. Um, again, as we, we noted, it provides students with attendance options. Um, and as you will hear in the future, um, this has some benefits. Um, Chris will be uh, uh, discussing this uh, um, shortly. And another bonus, uh, benefit is um, for um, you know, COVID-19, um, it helps us uh, maintain some uh, social distancing uh, with having students able to be um, in seat and remote. Uh, we have uh, some classrooms that, uh, for, to maintain social distancing, can't have or handle um, you know, 30 students. So we have the uh, the class broken up into the in seat section and uh, uh, real time virtual remote, and uh, they can flip back and forth between those um, to alternate. So you know, students that wish to attend class, they get assigned a group saying, okay, if you wish to come into class, you know, group A, your day is Monday. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and group B, if you do elect to come to class, your day is Wednesday. That allows us to control the numbers of uh, students that are in classes, um, and then the students obviously always could attend uh, um, remotely. Uh, so yes, there are days when you walk in the class and you're talking to four students um, in seat and uh, possibly 15 students remotely. Um, it does happen. There are swings um, in uh, the pendulum like this. And uh, you know, just one note, uh, the class session before um, a holiday uh, tends to be very sparse uh, with students electing um, a lot of times to do uh, that week asynchronously. Um, however, um, a lecture still needs to be recorded um, and posted. Thanks, Brian. Now let's broaden our view to talk about the past, present, and future of FLEX at Davenport University. The goals of FLEX are to provide flexibility in modality, increase student satisfaction, and increase student retention, while at the same time providing a consistent and high-quality learning experience. By offering more options for participation, we can make classes more convenient for our students. By recording class meetings, we can provide learning reinforcements to students who might struggle with course material or concepts. And by taking advantage of our learning management system's capacity for hosting and presenting course material, we can share additional resources that enhance the quality of our learning experiences. Davenport University began running Flex courses in a pilot program that kicked off in 2018. We started very small, with just one class taught by one instructor to make sure we could monitor and control how that class was built, recorded in our systems, and delivered. At the end of that first successful class, we expanded 
and have increased the number of classes we offer through Flex each semester. Over the span of two years, we've learned so much about institutional details attached to Flex. For example, how do we efficiently combine sections of a course taught in different delivery methods into a single Flex course? How do we note that in our systems? What do we need to do to effectively prepare instructors who want or need to teach Flex classes? What do we tell our admissions and advising teams about Flex so they can help students enroll in these classes? These and many other questions helped us to see how Flex impacts learning at Davenport. We do still consider Flex to be in pilot mode, however, as we're still in the process of approving it as an official course delivery method. We hope to complete that process in the current academic year. As previously stated, we have been running Flex as a Davenport pilot program for the past two years. During each semester of our pilot, we've surveyed all students participating in Flex classes to gauge their level of satisfaction with the delivery. We found that over 90% of students who responded indicated that they attended the course in multiple modalities. Many utilized all three delivery methods over the course of the semester. And among students who did so, all responded that it was easy to shift among the modalities. And all student responses, yes, 100% of students surveyed, said that they would like to take more classes in the Flex Delivery format. So, what's next for Flex at Davenport? We're so confident that Flex is beneficial to students, we were recently able to secure a National Science Foundation grant for underrepresented students in STEM programs that features the use of Flex. And, in addition to teaching this cohort of students in Flex classes, we're going to use Flex for educational supports and as a tool to build a community among these students. We've just begun this important project, but we're already looking forward to telling you about our success. Thank you, Educause, for giving us an opportunity to talk about the flexible course delivery format at Davenport University. Our presentation time may be up, but we have so much more to share. If you'd like to know more about Flex, please contact us at the email addresses you see here. Thanks again.